beautiful day here at Pescadero. Not too windy, which is great. Uh, so I'm here with Brian and Tad, just kind of looking around, trying to find our compositions. Uh, let me show you what I'm thinking. All right, so there's nice shadows on the cliffs here, and I'm thinking of doing something, I don't know, maybe something like this. So I've got my Anderson easel, and I'm using a 16 by 20 inch panel today. I've got cadmium yellow lemon, titanium white, cad yellow medium, yellow ochre, burnt sienna. I've added some cad red light today, alizarin crimson, dioxazine purple, ultramarine blue, and phthalo blue. And I'm using liquid as my medium. So here's the composition. Um, I kind of indicated shadow areas by just, uh, you know, just kind of sketching in with burnt sienna here. So the shadow area here, here, a lot of uh, foreground, you know, a lot of this green in this area, uh, including that, and then um, distant hills as well, which are way out there, but I'm gonna exaggerate those and include them up at the top. Uh, and then as usual, kind of have the waves wrap in a radial fashion like that. So that's the basic idea. Uh, this is a lot of foreground, so it's kind of a, an interesting experiment. Not sure if it's gonna work, having that much. Um, that's like almost a quarter of the panel, but I don't know, it doesn't bother me, so I'm gonna keep pushing ahead. Wow, you're making quick progress here. Oh man, yeah, just, just jumping in. Yeah, you're laying it in. So you got a, it looks like a 16 by 16 inch panel, right? That's right, that's right. Uh, and, uh, oh, you got a little sketch. Got a little Notan study there. Okay, and you're doing this scene out here. Yep. Love how much paint you've got. Look at that, so beautiful. Yeah, going for it, painting like a millionaire. That's right. <laughs> All right, man, looks good so far. I'll uh, check back with you later. Cool, thanks. All right, man. All right, Brian, how you doing? Wow, you're already making good progress here. Also a 16 by 20, 16 right? 16 by 20. Yeah, uh, stretch canvas, and yep. uh, you got a French easel, and so you're working on the built-in palette. Yep. Yeah, there you go. There's your sketch, and there's the scene. Yeah. All right, perfect. Well, cool. you're off to a good start, man. Cool. I'll come back thanks. and check in a bit. Thanks.
It blew off the easel? Yeah, it blew off the easel. Took a walk, go down to see Tad and... And it just went, and it yeah. took off. Actually, when now I was it's 20 got, feet away. It's got sort of a this, modern abstract thing going exactly, on right now. Exactly, This is worth more now. That's this right. is definitely... <laughs> that just boosted the value. I just upped my game big time. <laughs> exactly. Well, I can see basically, I mean, you still got the big shapes here. I know you're yeah. gonna do some cleanup, yeah. but... Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, and when I was like standing back, I noticed that it does have this, uh, you know, you can feel like you're looking down at the foreground and then mm -hmm. off into the distance, which I, that's mm -hmm. the kind of composition I really like. Nice, so. thanks. All right, we'll stop back one more time after Cheers. you clean up. All Cheers. Right. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here, but we'll take a look at it back at the studio. All right, so I think Tad is kind of wrapping it up, so let's go take a look and see what he's finished up with. Oh, I could tell already, dramatic light, which there is dramatic light now on those rocks. I know when we first started out, it was kind of, uh, it was all in shadow, but now you've captured some of that, uh, some of that light there. The uh, conditions changed. Did you adapt and change yeah, the color? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I kind of did that a little bit too. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so it's kind of a greatest hits of like the it's, last two hours. Yeah. One thing I like you've done here is, is that you've made the bottom of the rocks kind of irregular, which where I am, it's a straight line, and that's kind of a problem. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. yeah whereas this, where this, you know, this is a lot more interesting. Cool. All right, so you made the necessary repairs. Were you using a palette knife too? Quite a bit, yeah. I brushed in all my major dark values in particular and then washed and then I wipe away where I know I'm gonna wanna get lighter. And then I go in, this is all palette knife. Okay, let me palette. get up close on that. Mm -hmm. I see, so then you get that texture going. Yeah, and then I can keep adding layer. It's super easy just to get the extra layers and get more color in there. Yeah, exactly. I, so I'm not after an ultra realism, it's more just like, get the feel of it and have it be a little bit playful. Yeah, exactly. And get, get some of that energy of yeah. the ocean. Ex energy, exactly. I really feel like it would be beneficial to do like the same composition multiple times. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. To kind of work the kinks out. It's like, rarely will I, you know, do a composition the first time and be happy with it. So much to learn. All right, so how'd they roll me up? Uh, that's pretty decent, actually. How about you? Is that a fatty? Um, Let's see. Oh yeah, no, that's heavier. That's right. Yeah, that's, yeah heavier. that's a good one, man. That's solid decent. too. Yeah. yeah, you guys score it. I'm gonna have to go back in there. And like, <laughs> not enough content. Looking pretty good. They, these are called soft tops. The yeah. brand is soft top. Yeah, yeah I never heard so of that. You get, you, get, you get the epoxy kind of thing. The epoxy on the, the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. But it, you know, it's a hey, it's a board. Yeah, man, that's you, cool. Uh, do you surf it with a leash or no? Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah, you got your leash. All right. Yeah. All right, let's suit up oh, and hit right. it. So here's the painting in one of my natural wood floater frames. And I noticed right away that I'll need to change the top of this cliff here. It's too much of a straight line. It parallels the horizon. Um, I was concerned about having so much, uh, you know, this cliff in the foreground, but actually it doesn't bother me. Um, I think there's some nice color in the shadows here. And I like the brushwork in the uh, ice plant or the green portion. Um, and I feel like it's not an obstruction. The eye does pass over to the middle ground and then to the distance without, without any real trouble. I, I think I would change the shape of maybe of this rock, maybe connect it with the other rock here. I think I might change the color and value so there's more separation from this uh, cliff in the foreground. 
Uh, and then one other thing I noticed was the water was greener in the foreground and then bluer, more like an ultramarine in the distance. Um, I could have pushed the ultramarine in the distance more. It's still pretty uh, blue-green out there. All right, so this was a wonderful day. It reminded me of California in the late 1970s, which is when uh, my family first moved to California. Uh, I think mainly because it was just like music, surfing, you know, uh, burritos and painting, just being away from the digital world for a whole day, which is rare for me. I think it's rare for most of us. Um, and then I came home and I read, uh, reading East of Eden, which is a book from California, or set in California in Salinas Valley. Uh, it's by John Steinbeck. Highly recommend it. I'm burning through that book. I've just gotten back into reading. And uh, again, it's part of my own personal uh, analog renaissance, uh, returning to the analog world or spending more time in the analog world. Um, not that there's anything wrong with the digital world. It's just, I miss... I miss how life used to be in a way, and I'm trying to recapture some of that. So anyway, if you guys have any classic books that you uh, recommend or that are favorites of yours, put them in the description or put them in the comments. I'd love to uh, uh, hear what your uh, suggestions are because uh, this book is almost finished and I'm ready for the next one. Um, I will link Tad's Instagram down below. I haven't heard back from Brian, so if I do and he's got a website or whatever, I'll list his information down below as well. Uh, and if you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, I have over 125 extra videos on my Patreon page or whatever, <laughs> link to that down below as well. Really helps support the channel, helps keep me making these videos and it's much appreciated. Um, other than that, stay creative and I'll see you guys in the next video.